I just blame it on the jet lag. Two years, <laughs> one mouth. Then, then he goes into this powerful, powerful expression, and he talks about the importance of application. So this is what he says, verse 22, look at it. He says that it starts with hearing, because before you do, you gotta hear. And so this is important, that it starts with hearing. So I'm gonna ask you some questions, all right? There's no trick question here. How many of you have ever heard God's word? How many? It's not a trick question. It's not a trick question. Y'all can't hear in the back. Is that what? What's up? What's up? How many of you ever heard? I didn't say God speak, but heard the Bible, heard God's word. Yeah. Okay. All right. I told you it wasn't a trick question. All right. That's important. Tell somebody that's a good start. Well, the Bible says is that faith cometh by hearing. hearing. So it got to start there. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. All right. But what happens is my listening and my reading and my hearing God's word begins to enhance my appetite for God's word. So my listening and hearing turned into memorizing. So this is what David said, Psalm number one, that the blessed man is one who meditates on the word day and night. So something I heard sticks in my spirit and now I've memorized it. So how many of you have a verse that you have memorized? At least one, at least one. Even if it's Jesus wept, praise <laughs> Lord, at least one. All right, y'all are good, y'all are good. So. The, the memorization says that this thing has gotten good to me and so now I got word in me so that when trouble hits me, what comes up out of me is not what used to come up out of me but, but the Holy Spirit has a way of going back through the files and pulling a good word at the right time. Anybody here has ever had an experience like that? where you're facing a situation and all of a sudden the word starts coming up in your mind. You know God has done a work in your heart because that's not what used to come up. Other stuff used to come up, but now you got so much word in you that when you face situations, God begins to use the word. And so my listening and hearing turns into memorization. Just look at your neighbor and say, you know you got some word in you. You know you got some word in you you know you got some word all that word you heard from vacation bible school and from sunday school and from your grandmama talking to you over the telephone saying the lord said the bible some of it ain't the bible but say you know it sounds good anyway if you take one step he'll take you know all that kind they making scriptures up and all that but it's close to the word it's close it's close Amen. We give them credit for it. So the, his, the listening and the hearing turns into memorizing. And then what happens is it grows and develops into studying the word. Mm. That something happens on the inside of me. And out of nowhere, Sunday morning ain't enough for me. And, and before I know it, I am searching the scriptures for myself. And I'm studying God's word for myself. The Bible says study to show yourself approved under God. You don't have to study to be a preacher. Amen. If preaching ain't what you call to do, please don't try it. Please don't do it. Amen. Just because you study God's word ain't meaning you're trying to preach somewhere. You're just trying to make heaven your home. That's all. But... But the joy of it is that the word has gotten so good to me that I got to check it out in the Old Testament and look at it in the New Testament. I got to grab a concordance and, and I got to look at the Bible and the dictionary and the definition of the terms. And, and I'm caught up in this thing. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will put a scripture on your mind and it'll just mess with you all day long. And you'll start saying, Lord, what does that mean? And how does that apply? And so it started with hearing and listening it grows to memorization but then it blossoms into studying God's word but it doesn't stop there 
Because what Dame says is don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word. You can listen to it all you want, but if you never live it, it'll never make a difference in your life. You can quote it and tote it and never apply it to your life and you won't get the full blessings and benefits of it. You can know what it says in the Greek and in the Hebrew, but if you can't see it in the mirror, you'll never understand the definition of God's word. Come on, tell somebody you got to live it. Somebody once said that there's a gap between the head and the heart and the heart and the hands where we hear it in our minds we allow it in our hearts but we never express it through our lives it's the application shout application, application. I read somewhere the other day where it says there's a big difference between reading a menu and eating a meal Amen. Amen. you can read that menu all you want you just be as hungry as you started out reading. I never found a book yet that'll make me full by reading it. You can read the menu. You can describe the meal. But until you put the food in your mouth, your stomach will still be growling. There's a big difference between holding a prescription and taking medicine. I can hold the prescription all I want. I can tuck it under me my arm. It can be with me, but until I take the, the gospel pill, it won't make a difference in my, y'all like that, didn't you? Won't make a difference in my life. What's the use? Coming to church. Sunday after Sunday. Service after service. And never living God's word. Come in empty and leave empty. Come in nasty, leave nasty. Come in angry, leave angry. At some point, you've got to apply the word to your life. You don't get points because your pastor preached good. That ain't no points for you. Where the points happen is when you start living what the word says shout live it James says that you've got to apply you can't just be a hearer you got to be a doer that you can not get to a place in your life where you're just reading God's word and not relying on God's word you cannot allow all this information to not bring about transformation you can't just listen, you've got to, to live it now. Here in this text is powerful. The language that James uses, and we'll be looking through this book for this month of July, the language that he uses exposes the real demand. This is what he says in verse 22. He says, be doers of the word. That word doers means to show yourselves to be. The phrase is written in the present tense which means there's a constant action, which means that when I handle God's word, the purpose behind handling God's word is not complete until it's in my life. And the word says of itself that it will not return void. So once God's word has been released in your life, it will come to pass in your life. As a matter of fact, it was better that you didn't hear God's word at all than to hear it and not live it. This is the reason. Because the Bible says when God sends his word, it won't come back empty. And so the reason why some of you have been living a miserable life is because there's a word on the inside of you that you've not allowed to come to fruition yet and have not brought to maturity and you will not be comfortable, you will not be satisfied, you won't be settled up until God gets his word back from you through your life. That you got to live it. Say live it. Live it. Uh, 
that, that James says that there's a continuation that we got to keep showing ourselves to be doers of the word. It's all about the application. So look at this text with me. This is how the application happens. Number one, uh, it tells us in verse number 21, he says you got to put away some stuff. It says get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. Now remember I told you that this scripture was written to believers. James, how dare you say words like that? We're believers. Well, he was the half-brother of Jesus. He could say whatever he wanted to say. And so he was dealing with them that, that you got to be careful. And the reason why sometimes the word is not effective in your life is because you got so much junk up in there that you've got to make up your mind that I've got to put off some stuff. You got to reject. Say reject. Yeah, this is how Colossians puts it. He says, but now you also put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. He's talking to believers that we got some work to do. Amen. We can't just step up in the church and act like everything's all right. At some point, you've got to expose yourself to the Holy Spirit and ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse and wash you. You've got to let some stuff go in your life. You've got to. How long, how many times do you have to come into a service and reject the Holy Spirit as a Holy Holy Spirit is trying to deal with stuff in your life just because you don't want it to look like you got an issue. You don't answer an altar call. The devil is a liar. I'd rather people talk about me and me be right before God than me fronting in front of people and my heart is not right with God. You got to let it go. Anger. You know, it bothers me. Folk come into church mad. I ain't sleep with you last night. Why are you mad at me? Ain't my fault. Come in mad, got an attitude. Sit with your arms folded. Face all messed up. God been good to you and you, you angry about something. God has forgiven you for 50% more than you could ever have had done to you. And you got the audacity to come in the house of the Lord and have an attitude. Get yourself together. You know, at the, at the airports, they have, before you go through security, they have an amnesty box. In other words, you can drop stuff off. You know ain't going to make it through the detectors and won't nobody say nothing to you. And at the amnesty box, I was in an airport in Amsterdam. They got this transparent box. And man, it got all kinds of stuff in it. Scissors. <laughs> Switchblades. You know, alcohol. I mean, like, dang, who was carrying that on the plane? <laughs> dang. <laughs> but they let them drop it off at the, at, before they go through security so they don't get in trouble. So this is what I'm considering doing. I'm considering creating an amnesty box. Yeah. It's enough for us to fight the devil. We ain't got to fight your attitude too. Check your attitude at the door. Leave it outside. Pick it up on your way out. Don't pollute the church grounds. But when you walk up in the house of the Lord, come in here with Jesus on your mind and to do business with God. Put a smile.